Hello and welcome to The Brick News, the weekly show on all things brick building where we talk about set updates and announcements from all the major brands, mocks of the week and a few ring recommendations, news and deals as well. Information is presented as always by setdb.org, the best source for set information on the internet and this is where we are going to go in a second. By the way, in case that the weekly news show is not fast enough for you, as always, I would like to point out that we do have a newsletter function on this site as well so if you go to merlinsbricks.com slash newsletter or um, or just you know look out for the big newsletter button or in the podcast show notes video descriptions etc i think we have uh, given out this link as much as we could and if you click on this link you see various options to follow um the site and our updates mastodon blue sky telegram stuff like that of course we have rss feeds for like everything in fact those four links here on the site are just a tiny tiny fraction basically on a lot of sites inside the set DB. so let's assume you are in interested only in Kobe updates. Then here on the top right corner, obviously only for desktop users, you see this RSS symbol as well. In this case, this is an RSS feed just for Kobe sets. And basically wherever you are in the set to be, there are like a bazillion um, RSS feeds on the site. So that, that is one way for sure. However, I mean, many people are lazy and prefer something by email and this is possible as well. So uh, you actually have to register on the site, but if you do that, um, then we can send you if you so desire. By default, it's deactivated. We will never send you emails unasked besides the email confirmation email that you get when you register. But next to that, we almost never ask or will never send you anything. Um, however, you can activate here a daily or weekly notification on set new sets in the database or new content. And on content, you can also um, opt for the immediate notification. Uh, while for sets, we only have daily and weekly. We do not offer this for every brand, just a few major brands. But this is like the quickest way to get updates on new sets. However, you can also listen to the show. That's fine with me as well. With that, we are getting started with the German brand Blue Bricks from over here. And here we have two availabilities from the mini blocks area. So I think these both of them are actually lots sets that Blue Bricks, I guess, has kind of licensed or, or just purchased from them. I don't know how exactly the deal worked. And then Blue Bricks is also throwing in their own minifigure design. So as a result, you have, for instance, here the 108038. I think I did report it on this one. No, I did not. Um, but uh, so this may be the first time you see this. So this is a 4,761 piece count mini brick set. So keep that in mind. That is so that's for those of you who are not familiar. Mini bricks are basically... I think it's half the size, right, um, of regular bricks. Um, it's the same system, so it's it scales. It's like Duplo, but on the other side. Um, and so that's also, don't be uh, surprised by the price point because this thing just costs you 100 bucks. That's 2.1 cents a piece. And this is simply the reason because this thing may be a lot smaller than you're used to. Anyhow, Blue Bricks has thrown in their own minifigure design. So I guess they are to scale as well. So here you go. I mean, obviously this design here is... I mean, it's not that original. Obviously, the designer of this original lost set has taken a lot of um, uh, a lot of inspiration by Lego ideas, and I guess also by many of the alternate builds that came out back in the day. I think alternate builds on the Lego Ideas Treehouse, as well as the uh, fishing fishing shop. I don't even know what was the English name uh, for this one, but you know which idea set I'm talking about. So obviously, there were a ton of alternate builds looking a little bit like this. So obviously, there was a lot of inspiration coming into the set. Nevertheless, you can now nowadays buy it from Lego, uh, from Blue Bricks, my apologies, uh, including four Blue Bricks minifigures. And the same is true. Also available now is the subway station 108037. So 1,753 mini blocks and it's going to cost you just 45 bucks. As always, these are European prices. And that, of course, over here in Europe always includes value at tax. And then we have two announcements. First, the Palisade Palis, Palisade? Palisade? I don't know how this is to be pronounced correctly. Palisade Gate for sure. 108479. So this is another Bluebrick special that of course is in one of the many, many extensions that Bluebricks now has for Blaustein Castle. So Blaustein Castle at this point in time has like, I don't know, I guess like 10 sets. And I think if you throw everything together, 
you should be um, right on on track towards 30,000 pieces. So if medieval castle is your thing and you don't, you know, you don't feel inspired to build your own mock with 30,000 pieces, this may be for you. And I think they are the minifigure scale, so they should go very, very well with Legos castle minifigures so this just this case here gate here has 1510 pieces like i said at this point in time it's only an announcement but of course i mean this is basically i think i should have a picture here so this is blaustein castle at this point in time with all the extensions so these are multiple sets so the, the original blaustein starts around 5500 pieces and it's so tiny you couldn't even see it in this picture anymore and then you buy more and more castle extensions extensions roughly around 5,000 pieces most of them and um, when you have a bunch of those then basically this is how the castle looks and then however Bluebricks as you can see with this palisade is now extending this castle more and more leaving the castle itself and they have multiple sets and buildings like a blacksmith and stuff like that that you can integrate in this palisade and now with this new gate extension, you actually have the option to put in or throw in a much bigger gate. Obviously, you can also buy these Palisade extensions, so you can make this thing basically as big as you want. So if you want to, I don't know, have a couple of, like a, a few dozen square feet that you want to fill with stuff, um, that is now possible. However, keep in mind what I'm showing you right now is the gatehouse that is also not available yet, just an announcement at this point in time. However, basically the core castle, uh, most of what you see here, right? Basically everything that is grayed out and the picture that I'm currently showing, um, that is already available. Uh, it's just this ex extension that is at this point in time, just an announcement. Anyhow, going back to the gate, pretty, pretty neat gate, I would argue. Um, this should offer a lot of protection to your castle. With that, we're moving on to a very famous classic small car with rally stripes, 108513. So I guess a lot of you know from, which movie, from what movie this one is, but um, Bluebricks has not licensed the movie itself or no license for this movie. So that is why they just call it a classic small car. It's part of the Modbricks line. I think especially in this Modbricks line, you have a ton of these vehicles and sets without a license. Some go to in my point of view but at the end of the day this is just a Volkswagen Beetle with a couple of stripes so at the end of the day that's fine in my point of view but anyhow 292 pieces and this thing is roughly like two and a half by two and a half inches and six inches length with that we're moving on to another set that is available Castle Bren 107973 and uh, this is a Blue Bricks Pro set so keep that in mind or the um, like the first two we talked about um, so that's a different concept here. So you get a colored box, you get a building sections, but you get only paper instruction, no digital instructions with Bluebricks Pro sets. Um, Why the other two we were just talking about, the gate and the um, white rally car are Bluebrick specials, i.e. they come in a very simple box, usually without building sections, just all the pieces together. And um, they only have digital instructions and no paper instructions. And for whatever reason, Bluebricks, and as I keep uh, saying uh, has two lines. One is Bluebricks Pro, you get only paper instructions, and then you have Bluebricks Special, where you get only digital instructions. There is no line that is doing both, for whatever reason. I think, to my knowledge, Bluebricks is the only company who's doing it that this way. But yeah, depending on which line you pick, um, you get either or. And of course, every design exists only in one of the two lines. I mean, there's very few exceptions. There were very few sets that were available in both lines, but it's just out of, I don't know, 2,000 rubric sets, it's maybe two or three, so not, not very common. Anyhow, 3,122 pieces in this bad boy. Actually, that is wrong. The box says 1, 3,128. So I think they added six. Uh, actually, it's already fixed here. Okay, my mistake. Uh, this fix will go online, I think within the next few hours. Yeah, I remember I fixed this already this morning. Anyhow, um, here we have Castle Bran. Uh, I think it's a beautiful design. I uh, really like it. It's very similar to Castle Wartburg. I would argue from a set perspective, but maybe, um, and also I think in similar complexity. I mean, this is a very small set considering 3,100 pieces. However, as you can already see here on the pictures, there's like a bazillion plate in there, plates, small plates, like one by one, one by two, stuff like that, a lot of snot technique. So not easy to build, I'm relatively sure, but um, yeah, looks amazing. With that, we're moving on to Kobe. And here we have Christmas Eve now. It's on pre-order actually both on both sides of the pond. So Warbricks has this on pre-order over in North America, Brickmo 
over here in Europe, um, i.e. In, uh, in Austria, I think Brickmo is located. Anyhow, you roughly pay 20 bucks, um, but over in Europe, no, it's basically more or less the same. And um, however, we have a few more information on this. What is, I think, personally very interesting on this one is actually this dude here, the Santa Claus himself, because look at the legs. This is not how a Kobe minifigure usually looks like. In fact, this looks a lot more or similar to, for instance, like the rough shape of a Lego minifigure, right? Which is interesting because this is not, I mean, if you look at a Kobe minifigure, let's maybe take one of these dudes. As you can see, the legs are usually much longer and there's a lot more space in between. They're not as square, let's put it that way, than compared to Lego um, legs, Lego minifigure legs. But these here look a lot more square and there's not as much space. So this may be a problem of the rendering. And, and that the legs look so much shorter it could also be that some parts of the leg is within the, this humongous belly of, of Santa Claus. I'm not really sure, but uh, definitely interesting. Uh, 2007 we are talking about. So one of um, Kobe's Christmas sets this year. Next to that, there is like, like I said, there's Santa in there and a cat, as far as I can tell. Then we have now a little bit more information. Actually, no availability yet in North America, which is interesting because this is a US car. Of course, Jeep Willys. And the, here we have several sets, actually. First, we have the CJ2A variant, 24517 by Kobe. It's a 1 by 35 vehicle. And if I recall correctly, Kobe has also a second version. That's then the white version. Um, but at the end of the day, it's more or less the same set. And yeah, I mean, there's not much stuff in there. It's relatively cheap. It's just a small car in this very, very tiny 1x35 scale. And there are no minifigures included whatsoever. And over here in Europe, uh, Kobe themselves is listing this one in, in their own site, um, on their own site for 17 bucks. European retailers have this thing on pre-order roughly for 13.45. And then we have, however, the bigger set, much bigger set, the Willys MBSAS with these very cool SAS dudes, 2298. Again, also 1x35. I think the car is roughly the same, but as you can see, there's a lot more stuff in the set going on. I mean, you have the skeleton and you have these two amazing SAS guys. I think this is... <laughs> I think the SAS soldier is one of the coolest dudes I have ever seen uh, from Kobe. And, and then we have an SAS officer. And then you have the willies, of course, machine guns and everything. You have the Thompson, the MP40, and you have the big machine gun on the vehicle itself. So this thing is armored to the T's. And um, then, yeah, basically that's about it. Then you have a palm tree. So you have 180 pieces in the set compared to 111. So it doesn't even have that many more pieces, but of course you have the minifigures, including the skeleton. And as I said, it is actually much more expensive. So Kobe's listing this one in for 25 bucks. I don't have a European price point yet, but Warbricks has this thing on pre-order for 30 bucks. So that's not a cheap set. That's not a bargain. However, I would argue there's a lot of special pieces in there, a lot of foliage. Um, etc. and three minifigures. I guess this is what is driving uh, the price here. With that, um, we have more information from Kobe themselves on the Lockheed SR-71 Blackbird, um, first on the Executive Edition 5890. So this is the combined US Air Force NASA edition, including two pilots, one in a NASA uniform and or flight suit or high pressure or low pressure suit. I don't know how these things are called. And you have kind of the afterburner um, additional pieces for the afterburner in this executive edition. However, all in all, I would argue the difference is not that big. I mean, I'm currently switching between the two sets. So the standard edition, the 5891, has one less minifigure. It's US Air Force only. Um, and the stand is slightly different from the print and color scheme situation and you don't have these afterburner pieces. This seems to be the only difference. And in fact, we are talking about roughly 50 pieces. Yeah, it's, it's, it's exactly 50 pieces and one minifigure. That's a big difference. Over here in Europe, um, Kobe is listing the standard edition for 100 bucks and the executive edition for 115. So basically 15 bucks for a slightly different look and feel. NASA prints uh, afterburner second minifigure. It may be the right thing for you. Anyhow, uh, just a quick FYI. This thing, I'm 
I don't even know how the situation outside of Europe is. So in Europe, we have these, or Kobe has these limited edition sets that you can buy only from Kobe directly. So I guess they ship also internationally, but they are not a partner of mine. So that's why I don't have links. Very unfortunately, Kobe themselves, they don't have an affiliate program that actually my sites like my mine rely on to get, you know, basically pay the bills. So that's unfortunately why I don't have a link for you, but you can just check out kobe.pl. I think this is where you can get started. And like I said, I don't know what the sip, uh, shipping situation is over here, um, but they are shipping within Europe that I do know also outside of Poland. 2596. So this is a limited edition, like I said, ex um, exclusive for Kobe and their own shop. 894 pieces, three minifigs. And yeah, I mean, it's a Panzerkampfwagen 2. Um, by, the, by the way, if you're interested, this is what this in German means. Panzerkampfwagen. And then it's two, like uh, Latin two. And then it's called Ausführung B. Basically means variant B, B variant. And Panzerkampfwagen is basically uh, the, the long word that is actually not used by German forces anymore. I think nowadays people are just saying Panzer, which means tank. But like... Uh, Panzerkampfwagen directly translated it means something like tank, fighting tank car. <laughs> like I said, nobody's using this anymore. It's like Second World War terminology. Anyhow, 2596, um, and this is the version 2. So Panzerkampfwagen 2 is like from the early days, this is like pre-Second World War. It was used en masse in Second World War, but it was a very light tank. And of course, I would argue not one of the famous one like Panzerkampfwagen 5 and 6 later on, like the Tiger. Anyhow, you have in this limited edition a lot of extras, as is typical for these, and you get your certificate that you have a limited set. So you have three minifigures, um, a plaque, the machine, the Maybach is extra, and then you even have this bar here. So yeah, that's that's that. And then we have also now first pre-order options and even in Europe a few availabilities um, around this big bad boy, Panzerkampfwagen 6 Tiger. Again, Ausführung E, Executive Edition 2807. So we're talking about a 1x12, 8,000 piece behemoth. So this is already the second time that Kobe is doing one of these. And this now, yeah, is the new updated version. Kobe is listing this thing for 600 bucks. Um, and as you can see over in Europe, you get it slightly below that for around 580 from European retailers. And in the US, you have a pre-order option from Warbricks. In this case, again, 650 bucks. So this thing is enormous. I think there's not much to talk about. Um, it's, it's just, I mean, it's as big as you can get, right? You can get this thing uh, with... As a two-in-one version means you have a French insignia and a German insignia. So basically that's yeah, there's not much to say about it. I think this set speaks for itself. And then a few more information on the Funhol Farmstead Cheese House, the 9049. Here we now also have official pictures. We have the manual link. So this thing is now officially available. I think I did report on this one. Yes, I did. However, back then, we I think we did not have um, official information on this one. However, yeah, this was basically months ago. I think back in the day, it was just listed with a couple of retailers. But now we have official information. So if, if you're not sure yet, I, we have nine um, out of the official pictures. And we also have a final presentation video on YouTube linked here as well. Basically, Funnel is asking for around 70 bucks. However, I am actually have to double check. Do I need to refresh? I think I found also a link on Amazon US. So you may want to check that out. Um, I think it's not available in Amazon Europe yet, but I think they have this already in stock in Amazon.com. Um, maybe you want to check this out if you're interested in the set. This may be cheaper, especially as we have Prime Day deals right now. Um, which I will talk about in a second. And then an update. That is something I think I didn't talk about this before, but I've now figured out what this brand PowerBlock is all about. So this is actually from the same company that Happy Build is from, which is something that I did not understand maybe until a week ago. So I did see these sets, but I did not really, we're, we're not really sure where they belonged. So for the time being, I have made this kind of a subcategory of Happy Build. In fact, these sets, some of these sets at least, are listed on the Happy Build um, manufacturer's website. But basically, it looks like it is a subcategory of Happy Build. However, I have actually this one here, the 8808. And um, a review, by the way, will be published, I think, this week Friday, if I recall correctly. 
And actually the box does not say anything about happy build, just says power block. So for the time being, I will keep this like I do with in bricks, um, with pan loss. Um, there is, I mean, Chinese manufacturers, you know, build, make new brands like all the time. It's, it's sometimes very hard. There are many Chinese manufacturers who have like five or six brands nowadays, which is very hard to understand sometimes. So that is why I've basically in the past, I created also in the set DB new brand entries every time, but I've gone a little bit away from that because sometimes they start a brand, sets get sold or, or shipped into the West. And then after a couple of months, they stop again. And now I have a problem that there is a brand that basically doesn't exist anymore because no new, no new sets are coming. And this is a little bit the problem. That does not necessarily mean that the brand doesn't exist anymore. They may still use it within China, but they are not using it outside anymore, overseas anymore. That's a little bit my issue that I have there. That is why I've decided for the time being, I can change this any time, that power block will be considered just a category within Happy Build. Again, this may be subject to change. Same is true for pan loss and in bricks. Anyhow, um, so these power block uh, vehicles are basically all eight start vehicles. Um, they are from that point of view quite similar to like what Lego calls a speed champion in different uh, sizes and forms. And I've actually, like I said, just built the Toyota Supra. So first of all, Happy Build does have a Toyota license. They have done Toyota sets in the past. And in fact, this is an official license set. And um, I said this already this morning in the German version of this show. This is, I think, the best eight-start car I have ever built. Um, it's it's astonishing how much production value is in this thing. So pieces are from GoBricks and they are amazing. Everything is pet printed in this thing, uh, which is amazing. Again, I mean, there's basically no manufacturer who's doing this. Um, basically, especially in this class, all of them have stickers. Lego has them, Mode King has them, Zembo has them. So that is amazing as, as well. And then there's there's even stuff in there like the rims and the tires. Um, there's a lot of, there's chrome involved. And um, there's even stuff involved like the, I don't know what the English word for that is, like basically the brakes, um, these brake saddles, if you will. I don't know if that is the correct word. Um, they ship them in four different colors. Um, so you can, you know, pick like you can have these things like in yellow or green or in yellow, red, blue and black. All of them are printed. So you have four sets, all of them are printed. I mean, it's, it's, it's above and beyond everything I've seen before. Um, and then you have these boxes as well. And these boxes are lo look like a shipping container. Again, everything is printed. The print is not the best thing I've ever seen. It has a certain like spraying vibe to it. Maybe it was actually sprayed because it's a pretty rough surface. And yeah, I mean, there are a few tiny things I have to complain about, uh, like the print on the window piece did not really work out that well. And the glass or the uh, plastic basically trans it's not that transparent as it should be there's a lot of scratches and marks in this one because you know transport damage if you will because it's not there's no extra protection for this piece but anyhow i mean all in all like i said biggest production value i've ever seen anyhow my review will come out for just this one 8808 has to be provided to me by wave rc one of my retail partners and like i said um eight sets overall i will link them for you down below as always but uh, you can also just check out and by the way i do know uh, there's something i need to fix uh, these of course all need to be in the eight start vehicle category i will take care of that as soon as i can and with that we're moving on to uh, Lego here, we have two availabilities. Magic of Disney, the new idea set. I did report on this one. No change here. 21352 is now, as predicted, available for 100 bucks. Basically, I mean, depending on, of course, what your currency is, but it's $100 US and 100 euros. Um, by the way, I now also have Lego Singapore integrated here as well. So it's $160 Singapore or Singapore dollars. Singapore dollars, I guess, right? Anyhow. $100 US for this set, which I still believe looks quite amazing. I don't know if I look Mickey's ears, but next to that, if I like Mickey's ears, but next to that, pretty cool set. And with that, we're moving on to UCS Jabba Say Barge 75397. Uh, it's now available as well. And I have actually built it last week, did over here in Germany uh, a German build stream and also published a review. And I think for on my English channel, YouTube channel, also published a short. And personally, I think it's a pretty good set. Um, the minifigures are, from my point of view, the biggest issue. 
Um, I originally believed that the stud look, stud heavy look, let's put it that way, would, not, would be a problem for me. But I think in reality, it looks a lot better than uh, it does on pictures. But I think they are. Yeah, they cheaped out on some of the minifigures. Uh, Bib Fortuna is unacceptable to reuse this mold here, stuff like that. Sweet 3PO is the cheap version. And these three new guards, like they have, like I said in my video, my German video, like the 30 cent cheapest city legs they could find. Um, pretty, I like Leia. I, I know this. Uh, these trousers, her skirt um, uh, is kind of a kind of a compromise but yeah there are pupils missing which i also agree is an issue um but yeah jabba is cool uh, no 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 nothing to complain here and the set itself is also pretty good but like i said lego did cheap out on in several areas and um they are still asking for 500 bucks and i think that is the main issue with that we're moving on to mode king and here we have a new set uh christmas train wonderland one 2029 4234 pieces so this thing is a giant uh, one of my retail partners in china about we are asking for 200 bucks i think that to, i think there are also a lot of big pieces in there so this could also be an interesting set by means hey i will buy this now i will have um fun with it over christmas time and after that i will basically use the pieces because of course it's mold king go bricks this is amazing stuff from the piece quality point of view but i also really like the set i think i'm definitely considering building it so this thing has electrification included of course we don't know exactly what they are doing with this they call this mode king control which basically means there's it's electrified so of course it can be assumed that the train is moving however this is not a regular six stud train so this is a lot smaller so it will be interesting to see my guess is that there is kind of a chain running below the entire track um, basically driving the train around so this will be interesting to see how it was solved um, but all in all really like the design i mean i'm i've never been a big fan of these stud uh, water look or ice look so i would prefer tights here as well but i think that is something that you can do yourself if you agree so with that we're moving on to something very strange that i don't really understand so if you have any context on this like what the reference may be i'm grateful for all kinds of information because this is a 12039 from mold king and they call it the esu kg230 diesel locomotive so this is a locomotive that does exist the kg230 is a well known uh, locomotive um, but this one looks more like a steam locomotive however if you look at it it, it may be kind of a, a retrofitted diesel locomotive. So if you look like in the center, the center is 60%, so to say, of this locomotive look a little bit like the ESU. So I don't know, maybe that is something that is driving around somewhere in the Disney park in China. And it's kind of a diesel locomotive that was transformed into or looking like... Um, uh, looking like uh, looking like a steam locomotive. I mean, parks sometimes do this, right? Um, you have these diesel locomotives driving around, and then they are, you know, get a couple of funny colors, or maybe are retrofitted that they look like a steam locomotive. That's my guess. What this is all about. Anyhow, at the end of the day, it's a Christmas train. Um, for sure, not the first one uh, that uh, Lego has done. In fact, this design, I think, Marble Man. Of course, there is. Let me check. I did say, of course, but it doesn't need to be. I think it's the other one, not by Marble Man. It may not be, but I'm pretty sure that Mold King has another Christmas train, maybe from a different designer. But so this is kind of the second regular Christmas train, if you will. It's not um, as much over the top as the old one is, for sure. With that, we're moving on to the Santa Claus slate car. Um, 10154. So you have the reindeers, you have Santa. And you have the slate, and um, it has also motorization in 2073 pieces in the 10154. So um, the motorization will be interesting, of course. My guess is, and I think this is what you can see in this picture here, that basically the reindeers will go up and down. That's my guess. It will be interesting to see, like... Uh, is this entirely synchronous between all six reindeers or like the, the left three and the right three in an asynchronous manner? So I don't know how good this is going to look. Depend, of course, or I believe it will depend on how natural, or I mean, it's not going to be natural, but how, how nice, right? These 
reindeers are moving, but anyhow, 2,000 pieces, a motor, battery, all for roughly 80 bucks over in China, not too shabby. With that, we're moving on to a couple of general news. First of all, Breckling Designer Program Series 6 voting has started. So you have time now until October 18th on the Breckling Designer Program site for Series 6 to basically vote for your favorites. Um, you have three levels, not for me, like it, love it. And based on that, um, a couple of these designs, actually five of them, will be announced by the LEGO team November 18th. So this is series six. This is the sixth and last series of the ones that the Breaking Designer program originally announced, which brings us to the second news of the day. And that is that for Breaking Designer program series three, is three so I'm not 100% sure when you will be able to see this, i.e. when I will be able to publish this video, this podcast. So this may already be going on when you see this. Just go here. I mean, I have done an overview um, based on the information that I do have on all six sets or five sets that you will be able to pre-order in Series 3. Like I said, it's starting two hours, ten minutes from now or 8 a.m. Pacific time. And like I said, you have all in all five different options here. I'm a huge fan of the Art of Chocolate uh, design. All of them are amazing, like basically all Breaking Designer program sets are amazing, but that is at least my personal favorite. And yeah, here we go. By the way, this German flag does not mean that all of these designers are from Germany. It just means this is my local, uh, and my local currency is what Brickling is trying to tell me. Anyhow, uh, with that, we have still have series four and five outstanding, where Lego is currently working on the details to try to ship these. But as I've done, I've done reporting on these, so you're already aware, all of these are done with um, basically um, the selection. So the next crowdfunding phase will be February 1st for series four and June 10th for Series 5, and I think for Series 6, we uh, do not have um, uh, a purchase time as at this point in time. However, keep in mind, also on Series 3, this is just a pre-order. I think in the past, it took at least six months to get these things uh, basically to shipping. With that, we're moving on. If you can't wait for this, but still want to purchase something, um, we have Prime Day deals. Um, so I try to give you a couple of links at least for the brands where I do believe it does make sense uh, to look into Prime Deal days, especially I think Funhole, for instance, they are very active. I think based on the Amazon shops, I looked into UK, US and Germany. And in all three German uh, Amazon stores, um, fun horse sets were all part of Amazon Prime Deal days. Um, but of course, Lego, I think less in the US, but at least in the UK, there's a lot of interesting Lego deals and there are also a lot of cool Mold King deals. Don't get confused by my thumbnail. Not all of the sets in the thumbnail are maybe on discount in your Amazon store. Actually, I created this um, thumbnail based on sets that were on discount in the German um, Amazon store. But yeah, just check them out. I put a couple of links in here. These are affiliated, of course, as you can see on this marking. So your support here is highly appreciated. And there are a lot of very cool um, uh, discounts here for sure, especially Funhole, I think, but also Fantasy, Mold King. There's a lot of cool stuff right now on discount on Amazon. With that, moving on to one reading recommendation also a couple of eight start cars the what the Zembo called the world famous cars is four sets that I did review actually you can buy them only in a bundle that's why I also published one review on all four of them as you can see here they look a bit naked and the reason is all of them come with enormous sticker sheets um, there are also a couple of pet printed pieces in there but a lot of, like I said, a lot of stickers and I did not apply them. I mean, it was four cars and I hate stickers. You have no idea how much I hate them. Anyhow, instructions are only these sheets basically. But next to that, um, I would say it, these are pretty neat cars. I mean, they have a couple of interesting design options. They use some pieces that you may not be familiar with if you come from the Lego universe, like these inverted tiles, I would almost say. They're actually a lot thinner than regular inverted tiles, like the ones that Lego does. Uh, which gives, I think, the underside a pretty clean look. And also they are very low riders. That's unbelievable how low these things are. They almost don't drive um, because they're just like, I don't know. They are very, very low. 
a fraction of an inch, uh, a very, very tiny fraction above ground. Um, and like I said, there are also printed pieces in there, a couple of special pieces like using here for the spoilers. Some of them look pretty um, n pretty neat, even without the stickers. Some have more issues. Um, in Siri, they are minifigure compatible, but in fact, as you can see, you can't get minifigures in them. And the pieces are okay. They do work. They don't win a prize a beauty competition, let's put it that way. Um, however, the, the interesting part is, and like I said, overall they're pretty good, and then you hear how much you have to pay for them, which is basically something like 30 bucks um, for all four of them, which is kind of amazing. With that, we're moving on to Mox of the Week, and here we have the house of Frau Frankenhofner. Um, so that sounds very German, but I have actually no idea what this is all about. So I may have, should have done a little bit of Googling and research, and the description doesn't tell what this is all about. Anyhow, Frau Frankenhofner obviously is living in this house, at least that's my guess, and ignore my ignorance. Maybe that is something I should know, a name that I should know, but I don't. But I really do like the design. It's a free form mock, which is always amazing. I mean, it's not using any white snot techniques, but at least it's using wedge plates, so it's not on a, on a base plate. That's what I was trying to say. And it has, it has like a ton of detail, a lot of very cool greebling, the foliage. Uh, the color scheme is amazing, so all in all, a beautiful mark. Also like the roof design, always been a big fan of the two-third uh, slope piece, one by one or one by two. Using here this color scheme as well looks quite quite amazing, I must say. But yeah, all in all, pretty neat uh, design. And then we come to the Voyager Bridge by Lilium Brickyards, 1,776 pieces. And oh my god, this thing looks amazing. So, of course, it's not, if you're, vo if you're a Star Trek fan, it's not easy to come by good minifigures and also this prints. However, we have blue bricks nowadays, and they have at least some pretty cool prints that you may be able to recycle for a mock like this one, so you don't have to go for custom prints. And, of course, blue bricks also had minifigures. At least they had. They have been removed moved from the store and in its entirety. Um, so nobody really knows what's going on. Um, I think a lot of fans have, have you know, reached out to Bluebricks, like what is going on. They, I, I still have them on my on my site, so you can check them out. But they have all been removed from the Bluebricks site. Nobody knows what's going on. Presumably, it's there must be some problem with, uh, with the license, I guess. Um, but nobody really knows. Um, but yeah, I mean, if custom Star Trek minifigures are too expensive, you may get Blue Bricks minifigures on the secondary market. However, the Blue Bricks figures, to be honest, look not as good as these. Anyhow, I really like the Voyager Bridge by Lilium Brickyards. Um, this thing looks really amazing. I mean, of course, if you really want to make it look like this, um, you need a bazillion custom prints. But next to that, it's quite beautiful. With that, we're moving on to the City Walls extension by Benobas. So like the name suggests, this is an extension for the gatehouse or city gates build that I think I did report on before. And yeah, this truly is a city wall in minifigure scale. I mean, obviously, we talk a lot about minifigure scale. Usually it means, okay, a building that somehow works with minifigures, but of course, most sets, including most Lego sets, are not truly to scale by means, okay, let's assume a minifigure is a human, which, of course, is weird because the Lego minifigure is incorrect in so many ways, <laughs> right? But if you're basically saying, okay, minifigure scale should, I guess, mean, okay, human scale, right? The same way as a minifigure scale is to a human. And of course, most sets are not. Um, there are a couple of UCS sets like the Razor Crest, for instance, or the UCS 8080. But for instance, I don't know, a modular building, you would go nuts if you have to live in a house as small as a modular building is, as let's assume you're a, a minifigure. Anyhow, this thing here, is, I think, much more to scale, and the result is it is a giant beer moss. This extension only is one is 12,729 pieces, so that's quite astonishing, and the designer, however, is only asking for 25, 21 bucks uh, 50, or 21 euros 50, which I think is not too shabby. But the, next to the size, I think the design is really beautiful, so if you're looking for an almost realistic home for your minifigures, your castle figures, I think this is the way to go. And then we come to an alternate build for Rivendell again, 10316 by PL Mox, who's doing a ton of amazing alternate builds from, um, 
for modular buildings. So if you're into that, I definitely recommend checking out his account. And uh, this is now, I think, also an interesting alternate build for Rivendell. Actually, over here in Europe, Rivendell is part of the Amazon Prime Day deal, so you can get Rivendell right now for 400 bucks, which is, of course, a lot bigger. Bigger. Another option, if you're interested in this mock, of course, could be try to uh, get Rivendell without minifigures. This could also be an interesting way, a good way to basically get this a bit cheaper. But all in all, I think it's a very nice design. And of course, I mean, if you are in the market for two Rivendell sets, this may be for you as well, because this, I think, could also be a nice extension to Rivendell itself. But as you can see, it's on, on base plates. It has like a walk uh, in, uh, in front. Is, it, is this a catwalk? No, it's not a catwalk, right? What is the name for that? I don't know. My English is, is not the best, but uh, of course, what I'm trying to say is you can even you, you may even want to use this like just as part of a regular city, right? Which is, I think, an interesting idea. With that, we're moving on to the modular swimming pool by Agro Bricks, 2,368 pieces, eight euros, and I think yeah, it's just one of these refreshing, friendly looking. Uh, designs that I would really enjoy. You know, you could throw this in between modular buildings. It's prepared for that. But also on its own, I think it just looks very friendly and it looks like a pool uh, landscape that I would love to visit, <laughs> you know, with all the waterfalls and everything. It's, it's quite amazing. So yeah, personally, that's what, whenever I see a design like this, then I'm always thinking, okay, this is the kind of set I would love to have both in my city or as a kid. I mean, look, it looks like the most brilliant kids set I have ever seen. But of course, no company will ever make one of these. It's simply too expensive. Anyhow, if you're in the market, eight euros for this design. And then we're moving to the modular Sears Tower by Ben Builds Lego. And yeah, again, Sears Tower, or as he says, as some tourists call it, the Willis Tower, <laughs> for some reason. The Sears Tower, I mean, it's an amazing build. I mean, I have built the Blue Brick Sears Tower, um, or the I think they actually call it the Willis Tower, but the point is, this is a 1x500 scale, so it's a lot bigger, and it's, again, not designed for minifigures, but truly to scale. It's an architecture set. This thing here, on the other hand, is more for minifigures. So it's modular, as the name suggests, so actually you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Is this correct? Eleven floors, uh, which is quite astonishing. And I guess with only 3,100 pieces, basically you only get the shell with this design, which is good, I think, because that means you can, you know, throw your own designs, your own ideas, your own parties, uh, your own construction sites, whatever you want, offices in here. In fact, I think this could even be an amazing home. Uh, for even reusing or recycling sets like, I don't know, Lego Idea Central Perk or The Office, stuff like that could go in here easily. So an amazing and beautiful design and also looks amazing from the outside. Should also go very well with lighting. With that... I hope you liked the show. For those of you who watch this on YouTube, please leave a like or a comment or even better subscribe to the show. And the same is true for basically every platform. Wherever you listen to this or watch this, please rate, like, follow, subscribe, comment. I mean, this stuff is called different on any platform, but it's all highly appreciated. With that, thanks for listening. See you next week.